Look, I'm always going to be real in these videos I make. I'm not an aesthetic person, nor do I live an aesthetic lifestyle. And I'm sick from allergies. I've had a sinus, like, pressure here, migraine, for, like, four or five days straight now. So, it's been, it's been a real trip. If you're new here, my name's Mel. I'm a designer. And I just make videos about living <laughs> essentially and career and stuff like that whatever i'm doing this is the last day of andrew's performances so i'm having like a solo day with rowan we both have allergies and we both went and saw the show yesterday i saw the show the weekend before because i wanted to make sure that it was okay for rowan to see because it's really hard shakespeare is like not something i really know and the more I'm seeing the shows that Andrew does, the more I'm learning. So that's a good experience for me. But I wouldn't know if a show is appropriate for Rowan until I see it. Even if I just read it, like the language is very difficult for me. And <laughs> like, for instance, the last one they did was Titus, I think it's called. And the whole way is like fine until the last scene they just start dumping fake blood on them so it was like whoa i need to see this by the time i post this video like the show will be closed on like history but they just did a show called winter's tale and the only thing that i know about this show is it has that famous line about a bear pursuing someone off stage but it was pretty good and we enjoyed it i didn't video any clips I kind of wanted to go into this one and just enjoy it. The first performance I saw, I did take a bunch of photos on this camera for them. I always take photos of Andrew's performances for him, but the people that do the show asked if they can have any of my photos, and I was like, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> Yesterday when I went, I went with the intention to just like watch the show and be there with Rowan, but I also decided that I wanted to bring this camera, which is my DSLR camera, and... I've been missing doing photo with it. I'm not really a portrait kind of person, even though I can stage portraits really good, I've always been told. But I just like taking photos of things. And this is my fixie. It's a macro lens, but it can do 2.8 f-stop. So I like it for when I help Andrew do like a headshot or something. And I just mainly took photos of Rowan with this when like between show and after show when he was playing but I also did snap some moments and I got some pretty good ones like this one was pretty good it's just it's not a mirrorless camera <laughs> so when I, I click there is a sound but it was really nice to just like take some I guess you could call it street photos it was really nice to just do that but I do have a point to this so I've been going through like a mental renaissance in my 30s, like I'm gonna be 35 next year and I feel like I've done nothing with my life, <laughs> which I guess like a lot of people in their mid 30s kind of feel that way or people as they're approaching 30s. But I truly feel like I haven't done anything with my life, even though I have done a lot. I have a stable job. I'm a management level in that job. I have a child. I bought a house. I do do freelance stuff here and there. Um, I just paid off my student loans this weekend, apparently. I got a forgiveness letter, so the rest of my student loans is gone. But it wasn't even that much that was left. I had, like, between 4 and 5K left. So, yeah, I have done stuff. But it don't feel to me that I've done stuff. And I've been reflecting a lot. And I think that is because I don't feel as though I have in any way made it in any way that I feel fulfilling as a designer or an artist, whatever you want to call it, designer, artist, it's all the same shit to me. And my dream and my passions have always been to be a creative person. And I've always seen myself being a creative person. And I technically do have a creative job, but I don't find it fulfilling. And I don't find purpose in anything that I do. I do a lot of administrative work now. I don't even lean in the creative. And like, I will train people on Adobe software and making products and all that, but I am no longer the one making products. But I don't really find the product side of my job 
that fulfilling or interesting because the products are basically translating someone's already created creative endeavor into a dye line to put on something like, I don't know, you're in my closet right now, so I can show you. But I mean, yeah, this isn't a license we have, but like, for instance, a designer created this art look for this mug and then put it into this mug. And some companies, the des graphic designer goes all the way over to that level. The company I work at doesn't do that. Everything's like sectioned. But the packaging, I've always found the packaging more intriguing and interesting and more enjoyable to work on because with the packaging, I feel like I'm doing something. Even though it's licensed stuff that the company, like, I don't know, like think of any brand that you know, like, I don't know, I'll, I'll name one that we don't have, Nintendo. Nintendo establishes a look for Nintendo stuff. So there's a Mario look, there's a Zelda look, there's a Metroid look, on and on and on, a Pikmin look, blah, 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 blah. And companies that have contracts to make the products for that license have guidelines they have to follow. And art is given to them. And there's like rules and stuff of like what you can do with the art and then what you can't do with the art. But packaging, I always found more fulfilling because even though Nintendo in this situation would give us art packs of what their branding is to look like, so that way all Nintendo branding looks the same, there's a level of doing something because I have to translate that into a die line in a more creative way. It's, you get the character poses, the backgrounds, the trade dresses, the fonts, the snips, and all that, and I'm building it where it's not somebody built it and I just kind of been nudging it around, you know? And I've always been more interested in retail branding. I feel like retail branding is what sells the product more than the product in some cases. And some retail branding is absolutely beautiful. So I've decided that I'm going to publish a mini course through this channel and it'll be free. And I'm gonna treat it essentially the way that I would treat a new hire at work of going through like what the job is, what the tools we use is, examples of what we do, and then like maybe an uh, exercise. Um, I always did like um, art, art challenges when I was hiring people that I just made up. So maybe I'll make something up and make an art challenge. I don't know. But I wanna start giving back to the art community because when I have thought about why I want to be a management level designer, I thought about my first manager I ever had, and it wasn't the manager I have at this job. The first manager I ever had at a contract role is the man only manager I have ever had respect for and looked up to, and I feel like I have learned the most from. And it was because he was a designer, he was really good at design. He knew a lot of different sections of design and he was an amazing person to be around. He brought this like ragtag group of people together and he really like lit the fire and the passion for design within them. And he helped them be the best designers they could be. And he made the products really good. He made working there really good. And he just like brought like th this amazing like, vibe into the team. So when I saw that, I recall like the 20 something year old me who's just finally getting like my first like real sense of a job. I was like, wow, <laughs> I want to be that person one day. And that's what I've always strived to be. And, and that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't feel like I need my job to be that. I don't, I mean, it's not a secret that like, I want to quit my job one day and just fully be independent. Like if it's, find independency through freelancing, make my own job, get a new job. I don't know yet. Like I'm still on a journey of like discovery and what is going to happen, but I don't need my job to start giving back in that way. So I'm going to make the first steps by publishing this course to help any designers who are still in college and are getting ready to leave college and find their first job or are out of college or maybe people who want to get into design, whatever. 
it's gonna be like leaning more into everything that I've learned about package design through my job over the past 10 years. What I do, I'm hoping that there's stuff in there that is not explained in college courses. Cause for me personally, as a designer, I've learned a lot of stuff working that never was touched on in school. And, and again, it wasn't until I was working that I learned a lot of the things that I learned. So I wanna give back in that way. Um, pan's really hot, so I have to go start ruining this grilled cheese. <laughs> oh yeah, that grilled cheese. It's kinda cool a little bit, but I'm really happy that Rowan is into grilled cheeses now cause I was not as a child. And I am now as an adult and I've learned that's because the wrong cheese was used on the grilled cheese. My parents always used American cheese and I don't like American cheese, but I really like cheddar cheese. So, and then also I went to this place in Brooklyn and it was a life changing experience with grilled cheese. And I think if I never had that grilled cheese before, I would never know the potential of grilled cheese, but I'm just besides the point. The second half to what I wanted to talk about is I am making more attempts now to be a designer again. I've been a project manager basically at my job, even though my title is a design manager. And I think that's really stupid. I have way more potential as like a designer. I'm a creative. And I think that's where a lot of depression I've been having and anxiety and frustrations and anger is coming from is that at my core, at my niche, like my natural core, I am a creative person and I have that itch. And that was taken away from me like slowly through the years as I've been promoted. And then I like felt a need to like work more and all that. And taking creativity away from me, I think took a part of me away. So I struggled mentally. And I'm making attempts to bring creativity back. So like for instance, this tax return, I took some of the money instead of paying it towards bills and credit cards like we always do. And I bought myself a tablet so I can draw on it. Cause I've always been interested in learning drawing on a tablet and just like having something to draw on. And I've been enjoying it and other things. Like I wanna do other creative endeavors. So. I want to go back to freelancing because I really liked freelancing. It was very creative. And I felt around like my non-creative work, it filled a void for me. And I also do see myself as a potential to be a full-time freelancer in some capacity. I've always been interested in that lifestyle. So I'm gonna go back to trying to freelance creatively and see what I can do in that. And also just doing fun creative projects because I think that's what's missing. I'm not a project manager. Like I don't enjoy looking at spreadsheets all day and that doesn't fill me anymore. And I don't need my job to be a designer. And I think that's hard for some of us who like it's fed into our brains that like you need a creative job to live a creative lifestyle and you don't. Like you can make your own creative job. You can be an artist without working in a corporate job. And that's the path I want to start walking. So I'm really interested in this thing called UGC work that I found. And it's basically making product spots for brands, like film editing. And I love video editing. Like I love working in Premiere and stuff like that. And I'm very creative. And the more I went down the rabbit hole looking at what it is, the more it reminded me of college, just like, those early days of like getting something and writing a script and making a little like short 15 second snippet about it. And I wanna try it. I'm not necessarily going to think that I'm going to make a billion dollars with UGC work and be independent and all that. If it's just something I do as a hobby on the side and even if like the return is just that I'm making videos or maybe I might get some free products, I think that's really cool. And other in creative endeavors that I am working towards is I wanna make more like online content, like little comics or little doodles and stuff like that and post that on my Instagram. And I'm aware of like the whole thing going on with Instagram and 
AI training art and all that. I haven't yet fully had feelings on it yet, but I'm aware of it. But also I just want to create stuff is where I'm coming from. So I'm not trying to be a comic artist and make money as a comic artist. I just wanna have fun, you know, and just do that creative stuff. And that kind of goes into like where I got the tablet of being able to doodle more. And I wanna try making comics and stuff because comics is basically storyboarding. And I was really good at storyboarding when I was in college and I actually did a freelance job storyboarding for a commercial. So it might be fun, you know, I don't know. This is kind of rambly before I make lunch, but I just want to like put that out of where I'm trying to go on the path of being a designer. I really want to get away from the corporate job, even if it's like mentally detaching myself and it's just making it just a job and me as a designer is everywhere outside. That's where I want to get to. And I have an update on squash. I started some more seeds because Andrew and me got the dirt for the planter box out front and only one zucchini survived from that batch. So I'm back at it. And this is basil, but I don't really know how to grow basil. So I don't know if this is doing good, <laughs> but yeah, um, I'm just living life. You know, this is more of a, like, I guess a mental health update and just like what I'm doing as a designer. But if you're interested in the course that I'm going to be developing, I am hoping to target a fall release. I think I will make videos and as I make them, I might be able to list them. But I do kind of like the idea of just batch having them and then having them upload. So I'm not sure. But if you're interested in it, subscribe to this channel so that way you can see when I put it out. And if that course is successful in that, I mean, I finish something that people can get something out of and I feel like it doesn't suck, I'll make more courses maybe. Because I want to just like build like a design community well, maybe not even design, just like a creative community, because there's so much in the creative world, like anything can be creative. My fiance is very creative and he's not a designer, you know, he's creative in other ways. But I just want to give back in that way and make my own way, I guess, as a designer. I don't know. But thank you for watching. And so again, subscribe if you want to see that course or if you just want to see the stuff I'm doing. I know this was a little chatty, but thank you. And I love you. And I hope that you have a great day.